welcome back once again for another episode of TOI Game Changers, where we interact with former players and administrators who have left a lasting impact on Indian sports. The guest we have today is one of the most recognized Indian sports persons and the first to win an individual gold medal for the country in Olympics, former shooter Abhinav Bindra. Hi, Abhinav. Uh, welcome to TOI Game Changers. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, let's begin with the latest big event uh, that you were part of, the IOC session in Mumbai. Um, my first question related to that would be, uh, how important was it for India to host the event and how beneficial uh, it has turned out to be? Uh, it was after 40 years that the Olympic movement descended uh, into uh, uh, into India. The last time the session was held was, in, I think, in 1983. The Olympic movement is is important. It is important to India uh, primarily because when you have such a young country, sport has a very important role to play in nation building. Uh, and the Olympic movement is one is the strongest sports movement in the world. So to engage with the Olympic movement in a meaningful manner is always beneficial. Hosting an Olympic Games is the ultimate ambition uh, that has already been uh, talked about and already been announced. Uh, but there are many steps to to that. I think um, there are just you know simple th thing of more people getting engaged with the Olympic movement, more more people following Olympic sport, and of course um, we as a nation. Um, excelling at the Olympic level in terms of our athletes, uh, winning uh, medals uh, at the Games is an important uh, aspect which we mustn't also forget. Um, you know, while the whole Olympic to uh, hosting talk is on. But the biggest news, or the most famous, or the most favorable news for Indians coming out of the IOC session was cricket becoming a part of. Uh, uh, the LA 2028 program. Um, the celebrations were obvious because it's it's a sport that the country loves the most and is followed the most. But we must not forget that uh, players like Saurav, Gosal, Deepika, Joshna, they waited for all those donkey's years to uh, hear this news of squash coming into the Olympics. And when it finally happened, it didn't make that much news. Uh, but uh, you being an IOC Athletes Commission member, uh, please tell us how squash uh, got the vote. No, I think uh, squash has always been knocking on the doors, and I have personally been surprised that it hasn't made made it uh, uh, in. I think what this sport of squash has done um, is that they've also, you know, kept evolving. Uh, you know, they've kept learning on how they can improve, and you know, uh, they've been very resilient as a sport, knocking on the doors of the Olympic movement. You know what? How they've really transformed their sport. The, the, the presentation of their sport is quite incredible, right? Uh, with the glass courts, uh, which can be put in front of iconic uh, look in, in iconic locations. You know, I had the great pleasure of spending some time with Saurav Goshal during this IOC session. He was there and he was telling me on, on how they've also worked on sustainability uh, of, their, of their sport. So actually to put a, a glass court, it doesn't really cost that much money. Um, it's an investment of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. I personally have been uh, very. I was very delighted with the news of squash becoming an Olympic sport. Uh, they've been trying for a very long period of time. I know our Indian athletes have always dreamt of going to the Olympics, and it's it it means uh, it means a lot to them. And Abhinav, uh, on India wanting to host the Olympics, you have already talked about it. Uh, how ready you think we are from every aspect, not just the infrastructure and every other things in place, to host another Asian Games or CWG first, let alone the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, uh, see, we are talking in the talk, what has been announced is 2036, right? Uh, it's a long, long, long way uh, away. Uh, and of course, in terms of uh, readiness, um, there is planning that needs to be done. Of course, you know the infrastructure. What you're referring to, to uh, most of it still needs to be created. Um, uh, so, in terms of immediate readiness, uh, perhaps uh, it's work in progress. 
to your question i can't really answer directly because there is no direct answer to it if we are ready as as of today or not uh, because it is obviously a work in play it is obviously a work in progress to your question of maybe doing a continental event first or or the youth olympic games first which we will also express interest for i think uh, is a good is is a, is a good thing that you're talking about because i think what we also need to do is build capacity and the requisite knowledge uh, to, to host uh, games you know the Olymp- hosting the olympic games is probably one of the most complex uh, organizational uh, endeavors uh, that takes place on the planet but it is equally important to build that knowledge within Uh, our country right because you know when you are hosting such a complex event uh, end of the day it, will, it boils down to coordination between local authorities uh, but uh, there is another aspect that we should look at is that we are still looking to touch double digits at the olympics in terms of medal tally and if i can combine it with another thought that you expressed a while back that we have the youngest population in the world but still we are struggling to match the likes of china who are way ahead of us so in that context what do you think is the way forward see as i already said to you you know in my uh, on my first answer that while we have we have we are uh, you know ambitious and it's very good that we are ambitious uh, towards a possible bit we must not lose focus on 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 developing athletes uh, and developing sport within our country um, and i'll give you a broader answer to it of course there is the whole aspect of developing our athletes and of course winning more medals no question about it we are on the right path the 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 asian games was an extremely successful event and it made each indian uh, extremely proud i think nobody expected us to cross the 100 mark uh, to be very honest um, you know whenever i talk to people within from your community you know people journalists who would ask me for my opinion i would ask them back and 100% of them no not one journalist told me that it was going to be possible for us to uh make those 100 medals but we did it we 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 won 107 medals and showed what is possible uh showed that it is definitely possible now how does that translate into olympic success uh, is is still a, is a still a question mark uh, the paris games are hard next year and it will be a good test uh for our athletes uh, to to really showcase what sort of development we have done uh, at the olympic level i am hopeful that we will cross double digits uh, it is only fair it is only a fair ask that we actually do it um, but just crossing double digits is not going to be enough right for the size of a country like india uh, with the youngest and the probably a very the most talented population as well we need to be competing seriously we need to work towards uh we have to be ambitious to become in the top 5 uh in the world how do we achieve that you know we have to we achieve that this is a long term play it's not going to happen just like like that um, of course a lot of good work is happening but what in my mind what we have to see is a complete change in mindset on how we view sport in this country right uh, currently all of us view sport from a very small lens and that is athletes winning medals or uh, you know our teams winning tournaments etc of course it is important but we have to embrace the larger role of sport um, on how sport can play a much more meaningful role a much more important role uh, in the development of this country in our country to help na- build our nation Uh, to build our youth to build our society how is that going to happen but if you only limit your investment to elite athletes or to an elite program and, and expect us to come to the top 5 uh, in the world i'm afraid it might not happen because if you just carefully see um, and, and analyze the top nations uh in in sport whether it be the united states whether it be a country like australia just see the role of sport in society it's massive 
people play sport for the sheer joy of playing sport. Uh, people go and watch sport as an activity. And that societal shift has to happen in India first before we aspire for these uh, for, 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 for becoming uh, a top five nation. That's my humble view. I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong, but that's just what I think. I'm sure you have uh, made some very valid points and they will be heard and uh, adhered to. Okay, let's come to the sport you played, uh, shooting. Um, we had our best show at the Asian Games uh, in Hangzhou with uh, so many young athletes and creating world records and winning uh, gold medals. Um, so in that regard, how do you view our preparedness for the Paris Olympics? Why I'm asking this question is because we are doing well. We were doing well before Tokyo as well, but we then crashed at the games. So how do you view this preparedness in context to the uh, uh, show at the Asian Games? I think the sport has done well in the course of the last few years after the massive disappointment of Tokyo. I think uh, all credit goes to firstly our athletes, uh, uh, you know, who worked uh, tirelessly. Credit also goes to uh, the federation. Credit goes to all the coaches who have been involved, the support staff who have been involved. Because after the disappointment of, of Tokyo, it very well could have been uh, that the sport slides even further down. Uh, but what we've really seen is that great amount of resilience uh, shown by, by everybody involved. Um, and it also goes to show the massive depth of talent that exists uh, in the sport of shooting in India. What you would see is, you know, whatever, however many quota places we won, um, I think 11 or 12 or something on that number, I think majority of them already, I think Manu Bhak is the only athlete who took part in, in, uh, in Tokyo uh, and a majority of the quota places have been won or, or mostly all have been won by completely a new bunch of athletes. You know, there are no there is no other country in the world which in where, where the sport of shooting is developing at the scale as India. The sort of investment that is going into the sport of shooting, no other national team in the world has access to that sort of funding. So I think I remain very optimistic. Uh, I think that, you know, we will win medals at the Games uh, and we will come back with a strong performance. And if we have to get to double digits, uh, as you had mentioned earlier, shooting will have to play probably the, the most important and the most significant role in order to achieve that. A lot of focus is on data science as well. When we talk about NRAI, there is a proper department in place. Dr. Pierre Buchamp is heading that department. Uh, but uh, how do you differentiate between, for a shooter, if I'm a shooter, I'm asking, how, how do you differentiate between technique and dealing with numbers and trends related to training and performance? See, I think the uh, data, sports science, all these other elements are elements which will help, which can only assist you. At the end of the day, when you're an athlete, uh, at, at, on the firing line competing, you have to focus on your shooting, you have to focus on your technique uh, and, 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 and then go and do what you're supposed to do. But all these other elements will definitely help you better your chances uh, of being the best that you can be. Uh, you know, when you're looking to be the best in the world uh, and get an edge uh, over others, all the little things matter. All the little things can be the differentiator between winning uh, and just being in a final uh, or, or not even making a final. The, the difference is so little. And in shooting, sometimes the difference between winning and being 15th, there's not much. It could be a point or two, a little here or a little there, uh, which can be the massive differentiator. So um, I think it's very, very important. And I'm glad that this element is... Uh, being looked at so seriously, uh, it is a positive thing. Uh, but of course, it is one of the elements uh, in the whole picture. Performance is a complex thing. Performance is a holistic uh, thing. And uh, many small things have to come together to create that peak performance. Is something that we talked about earlier, AI, artificial intelligence, um, it is now exploring different avenues. Uh, how how good or bad is this advancement? In terms I think of AI, 
Yeah, I think uh, AI. Is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, just want to complete my question. Uh, this tech advancement in terms of target-driven youngsters in their pursuit of excellence in various fields, not just sports. Well, firstly, I'll ask from a answer from a sporting point of view. Um, uh, I think AI is also going to uh, have a massive impact on in sport uh, in in the course of the next few years. What we will see is the role of AI in coaching, uh, you know, which will actually help democratize sport to a great degree. You know, you just talked about grassroots level coaching, uh, and sometimes you know you don't have quality coaches, but Imagine if AI could play a significant part there, uh, and and really guide young athletes in the right direction, making sure that they have the right focus and the right foundation. It can play also a very very positive role there. Of course, the human touch can never be replaced. Uh, you, uh, sport is all about uh, that. Uh, it is a human endeavor, so AI cannot. It will. It will just be another element which will help you. But it can significantly help uh, contribute to certain pain points uh, in the world of sport, specifically, for example, coaching. There are so many countries in the world, so many different uh, ecosystems which just don't have the access uh, to coaching. Even within our country, you know, uh, it's such a large country. All our athletes don't have that access. But with AI, maybe there could be a solution in the next years where. Uh, at least the level of coaching at the base level can be very good. Uh, you talked a lot about sports science, analytics, this, that, and the other. The role that AI will play in in all those factors is going to be significant because right now you have data scientists doing a lot of the number crunching. In a few years' time, those jobs are going to be taken away. Uh, it's going to be purely reproduced by AI in in, in, in seconds. Um, so that will also, you know, from a spot science point of view, from a uh, analytical point of view, analysis point of view, it's going to have a, a a massive impact there as well. Refereeing, for example, is another element where I'm sure uh, the role of AI is going to come in uh, in in a much more stronger way in 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 in, in, in many different sports um, uh, as well. Broadcasting. It's already being uh, used by broadcasters to a massive degree, and you will see that uh, uh, that will only increase uh, in the courses. Um, when we talk about content, you know, we are living in an area where you know content. It's all about content, right? Now there are AI. I don't know if you're aware. There are uh, AI solutions where for regular content creators. You know, you can package customized highlights of a sporting event uh, in the course of a few seconds based on what you want. Of course, AI can never take away the human touch uh, and the human interaction, which is needed, which is needed for the success of any endeavor. But I'm quite sure that AI will play a very important role in every sphere of society. Uh, it is already ha happening. We are seeing that in, in, in many ways. Thank you so much, Abhinav, for touching such a plethora of aspects around sports, not just playing, but so many aspects which are going to help shooters, administrators, uh, officials and all. So thank you so much for agreeing to be on this show of TOI Game Changers and uh, all the best to you for your future endeavors and uh, in life in general. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.